Quick Visual Tidbits Young Entrepreneurs, Innovators, and Inventors Series The Enslaved 12-Year-Old Who Gave Us Our Love for Dessert Gifted children can be found in every race and culture throughout history, regardless of their circumstances. This was the case for a 12-year-old African slave who revolutionized the vanilla industry. Edwin Albius was born enslaved in St. Suzanne on Reunion Island around 1829. His mother died during childbirth. Despite his circumstances, he invented a technique for hand-pollinating vanilla orchids. If you like vanilla in your coffee, or if you are a dessert lover, you can thank him for his ingenuity. Albius's enslaver, Ferriol Bellier Beaumont, taught him a special pollination technique for watermelon plants. The method involved marrying the male and female flowers of the watermelon plants to achieve pollination. Albius noticed that vanilla flowers had male and female elements similar to those of the watermelon. Realizing this, he married the parts in each of his vanilla orchid flowers. To accomplish this, he used a bamboo splinter to pollinate the two parts of each vanilla flower. This new method was called Le Geste d'Edmond, Edmond's Gesture. He made his discovery on the Bellier Beaumont plantation. Albius told Bellier Beaumont what he had discovered but at first he was not believed. Bellier Beaumont asked Edmond if he could repeat the process again, which he did. Bellier Beaumont then informed other plantation owners of Edmond's discovery. Albius's pollination technique was quicker and more efficient than any other method used by Europeans at the time so he was sent to other plantations to teach his technique to other slaves. By 1898, Reunion's vanilla industry had become the world's largest producer of vanilla beans, surpassing Mexico in vanilla production. At the time, Mexico and Central America were the leading producers of vanilla. Albius's discovery brought an end to the Mexican monopoly. Writer Kevin Ashton notes in his article how a child slave created a billion-dollar business that, in 1841, on the day of Edmond's demonstration to Ferriol, the world produced fewer than 2,000 vanilla beans, all in Mexico, all the result of pollination by bees. On the same day, in 2010, the world produced more than 5 million vanilla beans in countries including Indonesia, China, and Kenya, almost all of them including the ones grown in Mexico, the result of Le Geste de Dedmont. A European scientist tried to take credit for his innovation, botanist Jean-Michel Claude Richard. He claimed he had discovered Albius's technique while in Paris and that he had taught the technique to Albius three or four years later. However, in a letter to Reunion's official historian declaring Edmond to be the true inventor, Bellier Beaumont insisted it was Albius who had invented the method. Richard then claimed that he had misremembered. The French press even went so far in the early 20th century to claim Albius was Caucasian, not African. Albius's technique inspired and ignited vanilla production from Indonesia to Tahiti and back to Mexico, according to food writer Samantha Seneviratni. A slave child solved a problem that had eluded Europeans for hundreds of years. His technique 
allowed vanilla plantations in these countries to increase their productivity. Every year, the perfume industry makes billions of dollars. Its most popular scents are those that include vanilla among their ingredients. The world's most expensive vanilla, worth $10,000 per pound, is one of the ingredients used in Chanel No. 5, Opium, and Angel. Vanilla can be found in coffee, cleaning products, ice cream, chocolate, beauty products, soda, and candles. Unfortunately, a majority of people today are unaware of how this enslaved 12-year-old boy revolutionized the vanilla industry. Shown below is the world's first orchid stamp from Guadeloupe, a French colony, released in 1905. It shows the vanilla vines and vanilla beans of the plant Vanilla Planifolia. In 1880, Edmond Albius died in poverty in France, but his technique lived on and is still used today. Although many profited from his discovery, especially in France, he did not benefit financially from his own work. Unfortunately, we may never know how many other great innovators there were during slavery, due to racism and poorly kept records. For E.I. Marsha, now you've been tidbitted.